Hello and welcome to another quick video. Uh, in this particular example, I'm going to step through the very latest release version as of June 2017 of ArcSight Logger. In, in this particular example, I'm going to be talking about version 6.4. Uh, just as a little hint, if you just hover over the little icon in the top corner there, you actually get the version and the build number as well. So we can see this is the new version 6.4. Uh, this came out uh, part of the uh, larger release in March and there's a whole bunch of things that are in there. And uh, I think a lot of people have skipped and haven't quite realized there's a whole bunch of uh, improvements that we've provided as part of this release. Uh, I guess the first one I'll pick out is uh, actually there's a huge search improvement uh, around performance and, and what we can do there as well. So uh, you may or may not notice that uh, I'm actually running this on a virtual machine and you'll notice the speed improvements there just on doing a very simple search uh, and getting that data back, not only in getting the response, but also then rendering that in the table below. So we've made some very, very large improvements around the screen rendering of the table so actually how the table then is is constructed and displayed in your browser as well as a lot of performance improvements around how the search works in the background uh, so again uh, you've seen previous videos of mine with regards to search speeds and so on uh, and how that works on my virtual machine this is no different this is a standard virtual machine running on my laptop this is not a different laptop and you can very easily see the performance increases in there uh, as a rough guess without direct measurements uh, I would suggest just running on my virtual machine and running at least 25% faster on doing these searches and that's before we actually get to the speed on the rendering side of things from the graphics there as well so there's a huge amount of performance increases on that one do thoroughly recommend getting it upgraded with regards to that Another little feature you'll see here is that uh, it actually displayed now on the standard search screen. There is the ability to check out what searches have been run and what's currently running and what's available to run. The idea behind this is that you can actually see what other users are doing on the system if you're an administrator user. I'm actually an administrator here, so I can see other users. And these are the searches that have been run, and it'll give you the dates of when they were done, but also the time and the scan rate and so on. And more importantly, you can actually delete those if they're taking time. You can actually run multiple searches in your same search uh, view with tabbed views and so on and you can access and jump between those as well so it's an incredibly powerful uh, way to not only view and see what's going on but also then to manage the searches we always had a capability of, of viewing those searches and who was doing what it was in a different tab actually providing it here and some additional functionality being able to jump backwards and forwards between those means that it's actually very simple and very powerful way of getting that data we are doing an element of some of the caching around this to get the data searches and, and and being able to re replicate that quickly. You can see now I just jump back to a particular search there and you can see that it actually did so very, very quickly. It means that you can jump between those searches, you can jump between uh, doing some of that analysis much easily, much more quickly than you could before and having to jump backwards and forwards accordingly. One of the other things that we've actually done in this release, uh, and this has been under, uh, we've struggled to get this as a feature for some time, but we've now cracked it, is being able to search and index the request URL. Uh, th th that's always been a field that's available. You'll notice now it's available now. It's it's now a, a, a fully indexed field uh, that we can use. Uh, it was always difficult because, of course, the URL field could be large uh, and there could be a lot of data in there. So you have to be careful how you do the super indexing on this one. And if you've got very large URLs, then just consider that from a, a performance point of view. Uh, but I, I, it, it is actually there. It is available to be used. Uh, and we can just very quickly just do a search against that just to see the performance difference around that uh, in this particular example. So we can just run a quick search here uh, just to see. I actually did a previous search on this one. Let's run that one. Uh, let's do a wider range. Let's do that for an hour, for example. Run that search on the test data I have available. Uh, and then, hey presto, we get the data back. There's a whole section of it. There's a few hits across the data there. We've done that and got that data very quickly. If we scroll across, uh, we'll see the actual field uh, uh, with regards to the uh, request URL. And there we go. There we can see the actual it contains element in there. So we're doing full searches. We're getting a lot of feedback on that one. Common use cases around that is just to search uh, the data for proxies to see if there's a particular string, sequence, cookie uh, or, you know, indications of malware. That's a classic scenario for that one. 
Um, another thing that we can actually do now is control. Uh, if you're an administrator user, you can actually control how some of the searching uh, it behaves for the other users as well as your own. So you now have the ability to not only uh, control how some of this is done, and what we also now support is what we call Ceph 0.1 and Ceph 1.0. What does that mean? Well, it, it, uh, Ceph is common event format and the 0.1 version is what we all know about the current forms uh, and, and the schema mechanism. 1.0 is a slightly updated version of that schema that allows us to have uh, IPv6 data in there as well. So, uh, for example, what I could do is uh, just do a quick search here. I've got a pre. I got some data in here that we've defined. It's got IPv6 data and actually comes from a, a HP equipment. Uh, we just run that search accordingly, and we'll see that the data. What that means is that the the primary IP address field information will now include uh, some additional data with regards to uh, the actual IPv6 data too. So if we scroll across, we'll actually see some of this IPv6 data. It's included in there, so we can see that it's actually included. It's not only just for the source and destination information, but it's it's also uh, to support it from an infrastructure point of view to make sure that smart connectors can also send and receive uh, using IPv6 as well. So we now fully support that. Uh, it's been a feature that we've been uh, wanted for some time, but it's now fully supported with a logger, just as it is also currently supported with an ESM2. One of the other biggest things that we've actually done is done a big update around the reports functionality. And what we've done within the reports is have a complete refresh of the engine that we use for doing the, the actual reports themselves. So you'll see there's a big difference around this. We, we still have backwards compatibility with all the reports as well. So you'll see all the uh, existing reports that we had previously. Uh, there's a whole bunch in there with regards to how you want to do things and so on. That, that's not changed. Uh, and you can still get, use and abuse those reports as well. The important thing is, is we've actually updated the reporting engine quite significantly. And uh, there are a whole bunch of things that we can do as part of that. So let me give you an example of, of one of those that I, I, I previously created. So I actually just run this test report here. Uh, and let's just go into that. Uh, we can see now it's a tabbed view with regards to the, the reports and running those. So this mechanism looks very familiar to uh, the old reporting mechanism, but let me just give you an example of, of how it looks with some of the new, more advanced features and capabilities that we have within the reporting engine itself. So here we go, the, as the report is just quickly rendering the chart, uh, we can see that there's a report. This is, again, familiar from an overall reporting point of view, but what, what am I actually showing here? So we're doing, showing network bandwidth by source by IP address and this is over an extended period of time and we can see there's a chart and we can see there's two lines on this so we can see see the actual data and we can see an averaged calculation trend line across that that's just one of the features that we've made available I'm not going to go through every single option that we have available with regards to reports and charts but that's a common one that I get asked for can we do trend lines in reports from logger and the answer is with 6.4 yes we can uh, just as a quick step through uh, just to show some of the options that we have within some of the reporting capabilities and the visualizations it's drastically improved there's a whole bunch of extra stuff in there and I thoroughly recommend actually going through and taking a closer look at this. So here I'm just going to jump through. I'm not going to actually create a new report, but I just wanted to show that there's a whole bunch of capabilities now. And within the chart view, I just wanted to show some of the options that we now have available as the charts here and just quickly step through those. So some of those you'll rec uh, recognize from previously, sort of bars and columns and pies and donuts as well. But we've got a whole load of sec uh, additional stuff around pyramids, funnels, sunburst to add additional data, scatter, uh, and then curves and lines as well. Of course, I, I just demonstrated a, a curve and line one with regards to putting the trend line across it as well. So as you can see, we've, we've significantly ramped up the reporting capability. I do really recommend taking a closer look around this and understanding some of the options that we have available to do some of the more advanced capabilities within that as well. So that's a very quick step through with regards to the functionality that's now available with uh, ArcSight Logger 6.4. Uh, and I thoroughly recommend uh, everyone upgrades to that because it's a lot faster, a lot quicker. It's got a bunch load of new features and capabilities and it's well worth using as well. Thank you very much for your time.